Hey, what's up, family? Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. Once again, we got Darius in the building. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel, Guru Nature Inc. This one's going to be about the narcissism that's going on in this society, the lovers themselves. Uh, people love pleasure more than they love God. This is, this is the society we're living in. And um, we're also going to be talking about, the, what do you say, self-worship and like vanity. Um, I want to share a scripture to what we're talking about, which correlates uh, what we're going to say throughout this uh, podcast is in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 it says this know also that in the last days shall perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own self covetous boasters proud blasphemers disobedient to parents unthankful unholy without natural affection truce breakers false accusers incontinent fierce despisers of those that are good traitors heady high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Okay, so we're seeing this, and this all links to narcissism. This all links to, you know, the people who are, and I, we're, and we're also going to be talking about the signs to look out for when you're dealing with these type of spirits because you got to understand, and I was the first person to say this too on the internet, the first narcissist, narcissist on this earth was Satan. The devil was the first narcissist, okay? He was the first one. And people who operate under the narcissism, they operate under say, a satanic spirit because he was the first one, prideful, arrogant, okay? So it says, um, without natural affection, okay? So people, you know, the, the LGB, you know, community, right? Um, boasters, people pr prideful and arrogant, uh, despisers of those who are good, okay? In today's society we're living in, people hate, on the good and they love the evil they love the unjust the bible says this in isaiah chapter 5 verse 20 talks about uh woe unto them that call evil good and good evil okay we're living in this society it's like even in the old testament it was prophesied and it's happening today again there's nothing new under the sun okay so before when before god destroyed sodom and gomorrah uh in the days of Noah, the days of lot right this was happening and it's happening today too and this is what happened when people are turned their backs away from God. This is what happens when people are love with pleasure more than they love God. They inherit these type of, you know, traits. Okay. Uh, it talks about, um, um, talks about, uh, high minded, right. Mm -hmm. talks about disobedient to parents. We're seeing that on the internet where you have, you know, the younger, the younger generation, um, pretty much being disrespectful towards the elders. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, what we're going to do in this video, we're going to really break through the spirit that operates through the narcissism. And before I give it off to Darius, I want to talk about the number one sign you have to look for when you're dealing with this type of spirit, someone mm -hmm. with the spirit of narcissism, okay, mm -hmm. is gaslighting. Oh, man. When someone is a narcissist, when someone is under that satanic spirit, you got to understand the number one thing that you, the number one sign to look after is when someone gaslights. And what is the gaslighting? When you find someone doing dirt on you, let's say you caught them lying. Uh, you caught them stealing from you. You caught them cheating on you. Mm. Uh, things of that sort. When you when you catch them in a lie and you expose it to them, hey, I caught you, and they know that you know they caught they caught you. What they're gonna do? They try to flip the script and try to accuse you, falsely accuse you, and try to make the flip the script to make it seem like you're the bad person, you know. And they'll do whatever they can to gaslight, even though they know they're wrong. Instead of them humbling themselves and apologizing, you know, hey, I'm sorry, you know, forgive me, you know. They're not going to do that. And it reminds me of the devil. The devil, uh, he, he, you know, he knew he knew he did wrong. He knew what he was operating under. And when he was cast down to earth, when he was felt when he fell down from heaven, he could have he could have been like, you know, I, you know, God, forgive me. I'm sorry. But he didn't. Mm -hmm. So that's the same spirit that operates under the narcissist. It's all it's a satanic spirit. And you have to detect the gaslighting. Don't fall under the manipulation. They operate under witchcraft, heavy witchcraft, heavy mind control. And if you're under their spell, Bad things could happen. Curses could happen in your life. When you're around the when you're around the wrong spirits, bad things will happen in your life. Even the Bible says to um, you know the evil communication is corrupt good manners. When you're dealing with a uh, narcissist, best believe you're gonna be you're gonna be corrupt outside and inside, spiritually, physically. It's just gonna continue eating you alive until you get rid of that person. And God will allow that person to destroy you because what happens when you don't be obedient to God, because God always gives us the signs to the people we're dealing with. Hmm. He always gives us the signs. You, yeah. No one can say that he can't or he doesn't, okay? Um, and when we ignore those signs, what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen is curses that come into your life. Yeah. Bad, bad things that could have been avoided 
you know, if you were to listen to the Most High, and I, I, I have testimonies and experience from that, from dealing with these type of spirits. And I, I have no one to blame but myself because they didn't put a gun to my head uh, and say, you have to get with me. Um, you know, I chose the, I was, you know, you know, whether you're lonely or whether you're naive or whether you're not hearkening to the voice of the Most High, the Holy Spirit, you get punished. So do yourself a favor and get these devils and demons out of your life. Do not try to change these people. These people only, to, not, not saying that they can't get delivered, a narcissist, but that's between them and God. They have their own relationship. That's, that, that, don't try to change them. One thing about women, right? They love these type of men. They love these satanic, ungodly men because they want to try to change them. Um, it's just like how Eve, Eve in the garden, you know, she had Adam. She had the man, man of God. And, you know, they had an intimate relationship with the Most High without sin. But she chose the narcissist. She chose Satan. And that's what we're seeing today in society. You can learn a lot from the garden. Okay, and you have to be accountable when you choose the evil man, when you choose the ungodly man, when God has sent you the, the Adam in your life or God has sent you the man of God in your life that's following him and you choose to ignore and reject and rebel against him. But you're cool and nice and friendly and lustful towards the, the devil man, the satanic man. Don't be surprised when curses come into your life. You treat the, the good bad and you treat the evil good. You know, I told, gave you guys that verse. So just be very watchful about certain spirits you're entertaining. And like I said, guys, the fallen nature of a woman, she's attracted to the narcissist. This is what they don't tell you. That's Eve's fallen nature. They're attr she's attracted to the devils, the demons. Uh, they, they hate to admit this, but that's that's her fallen nature. This is why the woman has to be uh, submitted and surrendered to the Holy Spirit and to be truly born again, uh, to break free from the curse of Eve, you know, to break free from the spirit of Eve, you know, surrender to the Holy Spirit. You can't serve two masters. You can't be on both sides. And this is what a lot of people don't realize. And if you're under, you know, if I talked about Eve, it's also that you Adams because, you know, sure, Eve didn't put a gun to Adam's head and say, you know, do, do, do this too. No. So you Adams too have to be accountable to as well for those who are, you know, you Adams who are not under the Holy Spirit, who are still playing both sides, playing church, being religious, whatever the case is, <laughs> you know, you have to be accountable to when a woman's leading you astray, when she's leading you to the fire and God is showing you the signs because a woman that comes to your life or a man that comes to your life. It shouldn't come to with confusion. You should you shouldn't you shouldn't come with you questioning does this person like me? You questioning is this person of God? I feel like a person who's truly sent from God, you won't have to question. Not to say that they're going to be perfect and you know without sin. You know, obviously, you know we all we're we're humans, so we're going to make mistakes. But for the end of, at the end of the day, we know who they serve, whether it's the Most High or whether it's the devil, and we know a tree by its fruits. Okay, so it's time to increase our discernment. It's time to really see what's really operating under these people because these witches and warlocks are out here you know they disguise themselves as the angel of light just like the devil did remember these narcissists they disguise themselves as godly people you know not all of them of course but some of them do and they usually trap the disobedient they usually trap the fools you know the bible makes it clear that the wicked um, a wicked man is given to a wicked woman okay so you attract what you are when it comes to relationships okay um you attract what you are so when I see people like, oh, my ex-boyfriend or my ex-girlfriend was, was this and that, all your relationships are, they're all evil. So what does that tell me about you? You're the angel? No, it tells me that you avoid accountability and it tells me that your ish, you know, stank just as much as their do, as, as theirs do. So that's the whole, you know, agenda behind what I'm seeing too with this whole gender war. Listen, guys, you attract what you are. Okay, I, me and Darius, we've been friends for what, six, seven years now. We, we both serve the most high. You know, we both follow God. So let's see how we're attracted to each other, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my other, my other uh, brothers in Christ, too, as well, you know. We attracted each other because we both serve the same God. We had the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We both surrendered our life to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. Yeshua, Yeshua. And, you know, he brought us together. Okay, so what's the excuse for you not to, of all the people that's coming into your life are evil and demonic people? Like, no, you have to look from within. Okay, now yeah. I do understand, one last thing here, I do understand that Satan does send agents your way. Uh, Satan does send people who come as like the narcissist, disguise himself as an angel of light, but at the same time, you have to discern and detect these spirits. And when you're strong in the spirit, it's easy to detect these people. But when you're when you're weak, you know, we all have at times when we're weak. You know, the Bible says though, when you're weak, you are actually strong. But let's say if you're weak at the moment and you're and the devil knows this, that's why you're, you become vulnerable. That's when he throws the uh, people your way. When Jesus fasted, when Yeshua fasted for 40 days, 40 nights, the devil knew he was weak. That's why he came to tempt him. He came to tempt him when he knew the opportunity was present. Now, Christ mm -hmm. didn't fold, though. So best believe when you're weak, 
when you're vulnerable, that's what the devil, it's like he knows this. Remember, he came to Christ when he, and he knew, you know, when you're fasting, if anybody has fasted before, he did it for 40 days, bro. I, I'd be struggling on day one, bro. <laughs> day one, day two. Can you imagine how hard that is on day 38, day 30, Jeez. day 40? Like, and I, and I bet you too, the devil, he came like on day 30, day 35, day 30, you know, towards the end. He had to, bro. Yeah, he man. had to. He had to come That's when it. he started talking about giving the whole kingdom of the world. Mm -hmm. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, that was the last <laughs> test. He was like, look, everything you see, yeah. it was like Lion King. You remember? <laughs> <laughs> everything you see belong, can belong to you, you know, belongs to you, you know, like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. The ultimate. Yeah, I remember with Sujan, we always talked about the uh, the ultimate narcissist. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was what, with Sujan, our buddy, man. Yeah. We always were talking about the ultimate narcissist, like straight up, man. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I want to look at this. I want to look at things from a personally. Um, I want. I, I like to look at things from a practical perspective, right? Um, we got to ask ourselves, what is a narcissist, right? Like, what is the actual definition? So I, I went here and I did a Google search and, you know, I found one definition. This is like from, I think it's prevention.com. It says, um, so it, it actually, narcissism is described as a disorder. Mental, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah, a mental yeah, disorder. Yeah, mental it's, disorder yeah. it's literally mm -hmm. like, you know, it, it, there's an actual classification of narcissism. Uh, it says here that the classification of it, it said, well, this is the definition. It says, uh, the, the, defini the definition is someone with a, pervasive pattern of grandiosity, uh, need for uh, admiration and lack of empathy. You hear what I'm saying? Um, and like grandi so let's, let's kind of break this down. Grandiosity. That's like somebody who is like always talking about themselves and, and they're always talking about like, you know, themselves in some super grand way, you know, to let you know how great they are as an individual, you know, like, oh man, you guys don't even know, man, you know, uh, I'm living it up big, you know what I mean, took a trip to, uh, took a trip here, went there, and then, you know, you know what I mean, I was out here balling out, you know what I mean, like, just like straight up, man, like, as if you are God's gift to this planet, right, um, I, I mean, personally, you know, I, I definitely, I'm not against, um, I, I'm not against people who, who have faith and, but we have to look at things from a reality perspective. You know, when it talks about grandiosity, grandiosity that's like somebody who has no accomplishments, but they're always talking uh, in a sense as if they have done so much with their life. When in reality, they haven't done much at all, you know? Um, and then it was, was a need for admiration, right? That's like somebody who always needs, think about it. We see people like, uh, I, I hate to do this, but I, I, I can't, man. I have to be straightforward because I feel like the, the main attack that's happening right now is coming through, is coming through women. You know, I, I hate to say this, but you know, a, a lot of the young women are being pushed. They, the women, the attack is on women. And then once, and then once the attack happens on the women, it's like, they, look at how society expects the young women to like pr pr present themselves in, in a way that where like they have to take sexy pictures all the time. They have to post pictures. They all have to have long nails. And, and uh, you know, I call it the, the, the prostitute eye, eye, eyelashes. You hear what I'm saying? That's what I call it because that's really what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I heard about it like, you know, through, you know, grapevine you hear things, but I heard a story that um, the reason why uh, be, th those long eyelashes that the women wear, right, the whole point of that was because uh, the prostitutes, when they used to do what they would do, right, and when the men, uh, you know, would do what they do, right, they would, they like, you know, sometimes there would be like, you know, a, a spray of, of you know, of, uh, of semen, and then it would come onto the eyelashes, and they would have those long eyelashes to stop it from going into their eyes. You hear what I'm saying? So just to let you know, it's just like the same way when a man is walking around sagging his pants, right? That that came from prison. So you guys don't be sagging your pants, man, because in prison. A, a gay man would dis, would sag his pants to let other men know that he was open and available. If you understand what I'm saying, he's open and available for business, you know? <laughs> so, you know, we have to learn about what these things are, you know, don't just follow trends because somebody told you that it's popular. A lot of this stuff is demonic, you know, real talk, man, these are demonic attacks. And, you know, now we got the young women. It's like the young women can't even like 
if a young woman chooses to not wear lots and tons and tons of makeup and wear super tight revealing clothing, right, then for some reason that like society has said that this woman is not beautiful and that's preposterous. God made you, God made all. God made each individual beautiful, right, in their own way. We all, it's crazy because I see, like, there are women who have embraced, like, cutting their hair off instead of wearing long hair, right? There are a lot of women out there who just wear, like, you know, short hair. Um, and, you know, and, and the fact is, is that you don't, you can, you can clothe yourself properly and, you know, and, 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 and that is fine. You don't have to follow the trends that the social media tells you. You know, we got the social media prostitutes on Instagram. We got the social media prostitutes on, um, on the OnlyFans. TikTok. You know, we got the social, we, all these social media prostitutes, uh, the secret prostitutes who are using like Snapchat, you know what I mean? Trying to make money and, you know, the people like, it's crazy because we, I come, me and, and people like myself, we are working hard to raise money to help people, right? To help young kids in poor countries, uh, in Africa, in India, different parts of the world. And, you know, it, people will be very, it'll be difficult for people to want to to wanna go in and help and send us money through Cash App or whatever it may be, right? But the men will go and they will, they will watch only fans and they'll be willing to spend you know hundreds of dollars on these women and then they'll sit there and they'll and they'll and they'll masturbate you know what i'm saying to these women it's preposterous bro you know what i mean like why why are we feeding into this cultural nonsense you know what i'm saying get out of that man you know we don't have to uh young women you don't have to display yourself in in in, in this prostitution type of way you know what i'm saying all this wearing super tight clothing and and showing off everything the women showing the cleavage right young women young christian women right you're supposed to carry yourself in a manner that is respectful why why are you doing this so you don't become a temptation to the young christian man you hear what i'm saying and it's and now it's in, even inside the church that this is happening it, it, it's ridiculous. Like, like, you know, the narcissism is on a whole new level. Um, let, let me go ahead. Uh, I just want to go ahead and, and read this off right quick. I'm just going to, so, um, there, here are some, there are some signs. Um, there are several signs of, of the narcissist, right? <laughs> how can, cause you know, the fact is, the question is how can you tell there's nine signs that, I was looking on, it's called Duke Health, and they got nine signs of what the narcissist says. It says, it says a, a sense of self-importance, uh, preoccupation with power, beauty, or success, entitled, can only be around people who are important or special, uh, interpersonally ex exploit, exploitative for their own gain, arrogant, lack of empathy yeah, must be admired yeah. envious of others or mm -hmm. envious of others or believe that others are envious of them yeah. you know i mean it's it, there there these are all the signs you you guys watch out for it yeah watch out for that you know i, I also have a bible scripture that i wanted to read um, this is uh, from this is romans 16 7 6 chapter 16 verse 17 through 20 uh, and this is king james it says now i beseech you brethren Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they, for they that are such ser serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by, th and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad un unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning uh, concerning evil. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. You know, I, I, we need to start praying. We need to start praying for our, our, our brothers and sisters. You know, like when you I, I've noticed that. We've uh, recently I've noticed there's been a lot of uh, 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 even even in our group. Right. We've we've had situations where we have been uh, like tempted to attack people that we love. Right. And again, all of our messages that we're delivering, these are messages of love. We're not here to tear down people. Right. What we want to do is we just want to we want to lift you up. 
We want to lift you up to live on, on a higher level, right? Uh, Pastor Mark is always talking about the chosen ones, right? The, the, what does that mean? What are we, when, we're, when he's talking about the chosen ones, right? These are people who have been chosen by God to go out and, and, and to bring others who are lost into the kingdom, into the kingdom of God. You know, you guys stop falling for the demonic tricks that they're using, right? They, the, the, you know, the, the demons, right? They go into the spiritual attacks. They go into you, right? When you open yourselves up, a lot of the time, the attacks, there's many ways that attacks happen. It's not just through alcohol drinking it's not just through sex right it's not just through smoking uh, marijuana or you know any like it's not just through drugs that you open yourself up your own self pride you can open yourself up by having too much pride and having that narcissistic mentality you can open yourself up to allow demonic demons to come into you right and because it says i remember in the scripture it says that pride goes before the fall mm -hmm. you hear what i'm saying it, so that means a prideful person a lot of the time that the pride the prideful person they don't realize it even in the Christian community, that they're off the path. They're not following that path that God has set for them. We're supposed to be living with humility. And I want to add to what he said about pride. It talks about this in Ecclesiasticus, in the um, Apocrypha, chapter mm. 10, verse 13. It says, For pride is a beginning of sin, and he that have it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and uh, overthrew them utterly. Okay, so before sin is pride comes first. Just like I was talking about how Satan... Satan's first thing that he committed was pride. He mm -hmm. wanted to be like the Most High. He mm -hmm. even said that, I'll be like God. That's pride. Ooh. And this is what happens. That's the beginning of sin, guys. Mm -hmm. Before you fall short, before before you sin, it's, be, it's due to pride. Okay? And also talks about this in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 29. It says, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a war. Lest the land fall into wardom, and the land be, become full of wickedness. What are we living in today? No one's getting married today. When mm -hmm. I say no, I'm talking about the majority. Uh, a lot of babies are not being made from marriage through wife and husband they're being made through one night stands they're being made through through fornication yeah. you know fornication yeah. or maybe adultery okay and <laughs> what can we do Crazy. to change this Crazy. there has to be men men of god to speak to speak against what's what's going on but when me and darius speak against the evil and wickedness they call us evil they call us hateful or you hate women and that's what they do they gaslight and these people who say that they're not of the most side they're actually in darkness they don't even understand they belong in satan's kingdom and their pride has them blinded it's mm. the pride it's the pride and one thing that a narcissist operates that's the number one another sign you can look for is, is they're very prideful like you said arrogant too as well and you know another thing about these people is that envy envy is really strong in them um, wow. they're really envious of what you have and they're envious of others. That's a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a spirit. Yeah. There's that's also, a spirit. there's a, there's a scripture too. And the apocrypha talks yeah, about that's a demonic spirit right mm -hmm. there. There's a lot of de de demonic spirits out there. Mm -hmm. And, uh, let me see. I think it's the wisdom of Solomon. Uh, yeah, there you go. So it says in the wisdom of Solomon chapter two, verse 23 to 24 says for God created man to be immortal and mm. made him to be the image of his own internally, internally before they committed sin. And it says, a chapter or verse 24 says, Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. So the remember, the narcissist links to a satanic, devilish spirit. So it, it works through pride and envy. And those are, you know, one of the, you know, the deadliest sins that you could have. Mm. When you're, I just said it, you know, pride is the beginning of sin. So please understand this. When you're dealing with these type of people or if you are having these traits okay we are we are me and darius are here to be messengers to send forth to tell you guys to repent before it's too late mm. okay it's not just you know because in in the religious communities and churches they'll tell you that like darius said you know smoking alcohol sex you know opens your doors but and, and i'm not saying that doesn't or doesn't like but also it's a it's a it's a, it's a hidden secret sins that people don't even know the battle internally whether it's it's pride envy um slothfulness things of that sort okay mm -hmm. and those also opens up doors too as well you know i used to struggle with being lazy i was i was a very lazy man i didn't want to work i didn't want to um you know the bible makes it clear if a man doesn't work he shall not eat i was younger at the time i was like back in high school 
And I, I suffer greatly from that. I missed out on a lot of uh, open doors and blessings, you know. So there's always certain sins that we struggle with. This is why the Bible says if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. So I recommend everybody, you know, t um, tell, you know, God, show me what show me the things that I can't see that I'm struggling with. Show me, you know, maybe a sin that I'm that uh, maybe is pride and whatever the case is. Show me what you uh, what. I need to work on and yeah. give me the strength. Give me, you know, take the desire off my heart. I remember Darius, he told me something and I'll never forget this. He said that uh, he prayed to God to ask God to remove the desire uh, from him. And I remember when he told me that I was like, wow, you know, because we, we all know prayer is important, but it's like the, 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 the request you ask from God, you know, mm -hmm. if you remember the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Yeah. And I remember Darius said he did that. And I remember seeing him, you know, I was like, wow, like I got to, you know, and I remember I, literally the same day, um, I, I, you know, I asked God, you know, remove the desires um, that I was struggling with at the time. And I'm telling you guys, the next day I was like, I started thinking, I was like, why was I even doing that? You know, it's like God would really. So if you guys have a, like a, a, hit, a hidden lustful battle, whatever the case is, because remember the word lust means to desire. So whatever you're overly, you know, indulging in, whatever the case may be. Ask God, man. And I also recommend people do some fasting. Mm. Fasting is very important. If you, if you now, of course, this is I'm not giving medical advice. I know some people take medicine. Some people have, you know, things that they can't fast. But if you can, I definitely recommend you try it. Um, if it, I know it's very hard for beginners to do it for 24 hours or more. I just say try go 16 hours and then work your way up or yeah, 10 hours, exactly. you know, 10 hours, 15 hours. Little by little. And, and drink a lot little of water, too. Little. And drink a lot of water. Um and uh, stay busy. That's one thing I noticed about fasting. Like I, I think I fasted like 21 hours today. I wasn't even trying. Like I was just super busy. <laughs> like, I, I, I wasn't even thinking about food. Like I was just super busy. I was driving for like two hours today, and then um, yeah, I was driving all over the place. And I, you know, I was just super busy. So I, I wasn't even thinking about food. But I just feel like you know staying busy, and um, you know, because what that spirit does is it keeps you in bondage and it keeps you in darkness. And people who are narcissists, they hate their brother. That's one of the, that's one of the worst things you could do. Hmm. You know, um, remember Cain, Cain and Abel. Yeah. Look what happened to, you know, Cain and Abel. You know, he, he was, Cain was the seed of the wicked one. He was of the devil. He was also a narcissist too. He was envy of his own brother. How yeah. could he be envy? That's like me being jealous and envious of Darius. Let's say Darius, whatever, you know, whatever he had. Right. And I, I, I that, how, how, <laughs> like, I'll be happy to see him win. I'll be happy to see my brother ascend and level up. You know, I, I'll be happy for that. How Glory. can you, how can you, be, you know, there's people that watch us, right? Yeah. And they're praying for us to fall. They're praying for our downfall. And they call themselves Christians. They, they, they claim to be of the light. Yeah. And that's just crazy, you know, and they don't even understand Satan deceives them. And um, so, yeah, guys, just make sure on the straight and narrow path, you're going to under, you have to understand that you're going to have these snakes and vipers that are going to come your way and they're going to profess to be of the light, you know, uh, maybe not with their mouth, but through their actions, yeah. you know, and things of that sort. But they're really sent by the devil. Yeah. These are agents, agents of darkness, agents of chaos. And they come in your life and wreak havoc. And, you know, they, they can either disguise themselves as a moderating spirit. You know, the Bible says that the wicked watch the righteous and seek the slam. So they're watching you. Amen. They're watching you from fake pages. Maybe it's on Instagram or Twitter, fake pages, fake watch accounts. Out. And uh, they're just trying to gather information and give it to the handler, give it to Satan uh, to crucify you, to hang yeah. you on the tree. You know, that's, that's the, just like Samson and Delilah. Delilah, another uh, narcissist. You know? Watch out. Watch out for the ultimate narcissist, too, mm -hmm. man. Yep. The ultimate narcissist, because that's a whole other level of narcissism. Mm -hmm. You know, these are, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of demonic attacks out there, you guys. You know, um, stay prayed up, man. Real talk, man. You need to say, spend your time praying. Um, fasting, you know, um, just focus on building that relationship with God on a daily basis. And, you know, once you develop that relationship with God, you, you'll see, like, there will be people who, who like, who will, they'll start, like, moving away from you. Real talk, like, there will people who will start moving away from you because they, because God will send the holy angels to be with you. And, you know, this, their spirits, their, their spirits won't be able to attack you. You hear what I'm saying? Because you've built that relationship. And now because you have the angels, you can resist. You can resist. You can resist all the narcissism, you know, that they're that they're trying to like the, the hatred that they're trying to put on to you. You know, you can resist all of that. You guys stay prayed up, man. Yeah. Real I, talk. I, I, pray I, for your brothers and sisters. Pray for all your family members. Pray for the people that God has put in your life. 
you know, it says that we're supposed to pray for even the people that hate us. Yeah. You know, so because the fact is, it says that we're we're battling against uh, powers and principalities, not against flesh and blood. It's not the person themselves that we hate it, or that that, uh, that 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 hates you. It's the spirit that is inside of that person, the demonic spirit that's inside of them that hates you, you know, so, you know, try and be kind and, and kill people with kindness, mm -hmm. you know, be good to all, as many people as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and I know it's hard to do that. It's very hard to do that, but you know, God will reward you for that. And what Darius was saying is so true before we I'll wrap it up, but I'll share a little testimony real quick. Um, one thing that I noticed, but got what Darius was talking about with the holy angels and how he will protect you from them. Mm -hmm. um, you'll notice the people just disappearing from your life. Like they're not hitting you up no more. You're calling them, you're texting them, you try to hang out with them, but they just totally disappear. Mm -hmm. That's God protecting you. Wow. There's a lot of times where I was in, or I wanted to get in a relationship with certain individuals or maybe just friendships, not just relationships. And I noticed they just completely go ghost and I never hear from them again from years or ever. That's God. That's God's protection. When there's wow. a saying that God's, uh, when people reject you, that's God's protection. And I could vouch from that. Because I looked down th two, three years later, that individual was, you could tell they would belong to the devil's side, something like that, by their mm. fruits. We knew, or I knew. You know, so always understand that when people reject you, when you have good intentions for them, um, when, you know, whether it's a relationship or friendship, always understand that that could be a sign of God's protection. And the Bible makes it clear that those who fear God, angels will camp them. Angels will protect them. Those who had the fear of the most high in them. So always keep that in mind when it comes to battling the spiritual warfare. Like Darius says, we're not battling with the person. We're battling with the spirit, the spiritual wickedness in high places, the principalities that we can't see with the physical eye. Because best believe when people are in bondage to Satan's kingdom, to darkness, which is about, I would say, 98, 99 percent of people, especially here in, in Babylon, it's very dark energy that roams around. Uh, in the high places, and a lot of people are naive, a lot of people are deceived, a lot of people are, are ignorant to Satan's devices. The Bible says, be not ignorant of Satan's devices, because he uses people, he uses family, friends, the closest ones, to take you out the game, and he may use that ultimate narcissist, okay? So, you know, yeah, just to wrap things up, is there anything you want to say, say Darius? Yeah, um, so, you know, you guys, uh, very important, you know, like I said, I was talking about the nonprofit um, work, you know, the nonprofit work that we're doing, you guys, it's very important, you know, that we operate in humility. You know, um, I, I have, at this point, I've dedicated my life to helping others. You know, I, I opened my nonprofit and the purpose of it is because, you know, we're supposed to give, right? Like it's out of humility. The more that we give, the more opportunity that God, that, that, that opens up for God to bless you, you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, right now we got like, we got the GoFundMe going. Right. Um, you know, we're raising the money for the for the kids over in, in Ghana and Africa. We've already sent out the first amount of money over there. And, you know, they got the kids. Oh, man, it's so great, man. Like they got the kids. The kids are got their notebooks and pencils and they got posters and, you know, the, like, le to learn about the body and then to learn about like, you know, math and all types of stuff. It's very important that, you know, that we continue to give as much as we can to help support those in need. Because the fact is, is that here in the United States, right, we're very fortunate, right? We have, um, there's a lot of different programs that we have that, to, that, you know, support the people here. But outside the, outside of the United States, there's a lot of, a lot of children who aren't even getting the basic necessities that they need, the opportunities to, to get education. Like, you know, I, we all here, you can tell just based off of our conversation, the, you know, off of the, look, we got all this technology in here, you know, all this stuff, this is, we had to be, get educated, we had to read books, we had access to the internet. These kids don't even have access to the internet. So if you guys, please go to, go to our GoFundMe, help support the nonprofit organization. And, you know, I just wanna thank you guys and I pray that that, you know, for each person who gives, I b I'm believing that God is going to give you guys a hundredfold return, a hundredfold return. It's crazy because like um, I I've noticed like I I've been seeing Pastor Mark has been so blessed lately. You know, he's been given to our ministry like every single week, man. And literally, I, 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 I seen it for myself, man. I, over. I don't even know how many fold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know how many fold it's been, but you know, we're talking huge fold. God is so good, been blessing Pastor Mark, man. I mean, he's even, I've even, since we've been doing this podcast, I've noticed that what is like almost like six, 7,000 more followers. Yeah. On, yeah. on, on uh, what are you, what are you at right now? Um, you guys, you're all over, 
when I when I seen uh, we were at like seven hundred, uh, maybe seven hundred thirty, seven hundred forty thousand. Yeah, I think um, about yeah seven fifty two. Yeah, man, like you guys like the podcast. I mean, you guys are liking it, commenting, yeah. sharing it. I see people sharing on their Facebook. I see seeing it, and we just say thank you so much for support, man. Yeah, like don't you, forget to like, subscribe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like and subscribe to this channel, you guys. Yeah, and, and, and we don't, share. We're, yeah, we're not forcing no one to financially support, but if you can, if you're generous with your heart, and if you can't financially support, all, all you can do is like the video, comment, Prayer. that, and you know that's all we, we can ask for. Pray, too. pray for us too, because mm -hmm. you know we're doing the best that we can to keep doing this, and you know there's been spiritual attacks continuously. You see, you guys have seen on the post that people are, you know, those are spiritual attacks. Yeah. It's crazy because even inside the Christian church. Right. The narcissism gets released. And then, you know, that opens the, the, that sense of pride. Right. And then people go and they start attacking the messenger. Mm -hmm. Are you kidding me? Yep. Are you kidding me? Like, you know, there's people who say like saying all types of crazy stuff on there. It's like, dude, this is a Christian channel. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're here to spread the message of God. Right. How can you spend your time trying to f trying to find every mistake, every fault that you can? What type of spirit is that? That's a demonic spirit. That's not a spirit of God. That's not a spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah. You, but they watch. So the wicked watch the righteous. They're watching. They're watching from start to finish, trying to find one type of flaw, one type of, you know, and discredit the entire message. Yeah. Man. You know, and Call, like, calling false false preachers and stuff like that. Fall, like, you know, it's 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 malarkey. Yeah. You know, I only use that word. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite words, but oh. I only use it for, you know, when it's when it's deserved. Yeah. One hundred percent, man. It is malarkey. You know, like, nah, man, it, it has to stop you guys. You know, like when you guys see that, you know, don't even feed into that. Mm -hmm. Don't allow yourselves to be overwhelmed by it. You know, like real talk, man, if you see somebody doing good and you see some especially in there and they're preaching a message that is talking about real things, real things. Pastor Mark has been delivering message after message after message. This is this is delayed gratification. You guys don't even know how long it took him to to, to make to get to the point where he's at. How many videos? Go look and see how many videos have you released? Like a thousand? Yeah, like in my Patreon, my older videos I removed, it's over a thousand for sure. I have other channels too. So yeah, it's like almost maybe 2,000, 1,500. Yeah, I remember you say you said every day you were releasing yeah, videos. Yeah, before at I, some point, yeah. delayed gratification. Yeah. You know, so it, it, it took, and, and now it's like a snowball at mm -hmm. this point. You know, I, I, I'm believing for two million, man. I'm believing for two million subscribers, mm -hmm. without a doubt, man. Yeah, I, I know it's gonna happen, I, and I know it ain't gonna take a year to, for it to happen because when the people of God come together, right? There, we're unstoppable. Yeah. 100%. When we come together, we're unstoppable. We already have teams of people working with us, mm -hmm. you know, believing for us. People are contacting us, telling us to come to, to different states. You know, we're getting ready to take a trip to Miami, you know, and there's a, a young lady who's going to fly out here from New Jersey. People just want to be involved in the work that we're doing mm -hmm. because they see the message. They see the message and they want to be a part of it. So you guys, you know, I want to thank, thank you guys so much.